We will now use the element coordinate system to help define the direction of the desired strain. Let's focus our attention on the leftmost gauge for now. Remember that the edge here is the side of our strain gauge, and this side is the top edge of our strain gauge. Therefore, the value that we are interested in is the strain along the x-axis of this element. Next, right-click on Solution, Insert, Strain, Normal. For geometry, select just the left strain gauge body. Click here, Apply. And for orientation, we're going to select the x-axis, as we just learned by looking at the elemental triad solution. Under coordinate system, we're going to switch from global coordinate system to solution coordinate system, which will use the coordinates that we saw in the elemental triad. Next, right-click solution and hit evaluate all results. Notice that it's solved very quickly, since the only thing we're doing here is extract the string data from the displacement matrix previously solved for. Now, looking at the normal elastic strain, we see that the minimum and maximum values are the same, in this case about negative 285 microstrains, negative meaning compressive strain. This is because we only have one value, since we only have one element. The strain on this surface, which represents our gauge, was extracted at the nodes of the underlying mesh of the crank. There's no need to do a transformation on this value, since it's already along the axis of interest to us. Also, don't consider the direction where the axis of interest is pointing when figuring out if the strain is in tension or compression. If the value shown is positive, means that the gauge is in tension, and if it's negative, the gauge is in compression. Therefore, the value shown can be directly compared to your experimental data. So I will let it up to you to find the strain values for the other two gauges, but just make sure to save your work when you're done.